Hey everyone, we're here today at Area 01 uh, in the Makerspace in Maple Hall and we're here with Jeffrey Bergeson, a student coordinator, who's going to give us a little bit of a tour and talk a bit about himself today. Okay, um, my name is Jeffrey Bergeson and I am a mechanical engineering student at the University of Washington. I come from a small town in Washington called Richfield, and I'm an Eagle Scout and I just love to make things. Um, yeah, so how did you get the position of student coordinator here at Area 01? So I was originally, before having this job, president in the 3D printing club here on campus. And the people who started HFS looking on how to create a makerspace for their students that lived on campus to utilize and create things that are awesome, and, you know, it was a little bit of a press move, a little bit of a we really just want this to be here for students so that they have essentially a garage that they usually leave at home when they move into the campus space. Um, they were interviewing all of us on campus who kind of did this stuff. So Wolf 3D was one of the bigger proponents of making things on campus. I mean, we are the 3D printing club. And in the meeting, they were just kind of impressed with how much I was about the safety of the space because they wanted to do a few things that just were not going to benefit students very much and I shot them down as fast as I could and basically tried to get as much of a student voice into it as possible and here I am now I got hired on because of that and did a lot of work for them getting this place up and running and students appear to love it when they do ask for things they haven't asked for some of the things that got shot down so I think it went pretty well there we go. Uh, do you want to take a couple minutes and just kind of tell us about how the space got started and what students can do here? So the space originally got started, Housing and Food Services was seeing the maker movement and saying, how can we implement this here? And also saying, how can we give our students more benefits for living on campus because they deserve a lot for being in an awesome institution like the University of Washington. And a lot of what came about is they started looking at this. They planned it out originally as just a small space they were going to put machines and tools in. And then they started talking to people on campus. And engineering caught wind and said, we have money, you have space. We can't build buildings like you can because we don't have as much money as you, but we can pay for the equipment. And so through an ever-evolving cooperation between the two departments, they've started not only doing classes in spaces like this, but just funding a huge and awesome experience for students to have in their own home. Excellent, so should we take a look around? I think we should. Why don't we start with the Armada of 3D printers we have. We have 12 uh, Flashforge Creator Pros and one Leapfrog uh, Creator High Speed XL. Um, all of the Flashforges are currently off because the space isn't really being utilized. It's a brilliantly sunny day here, so. We have one printer that's currently running, and what it's printing right now is a hubcap, by, or a light cap for, I believe, one of the student cars on campus for the formula team. And I know the kid personally, he's pretty cool. He's one of the most experienced freshmen at all of these things I've ever met. So you get to meet a lot of cool people when you work in a place like this. Here we have the sewing area, so we have a lot of sewing machines. We have a Genome 11,000 uh, Dreamer, I believe? Memory Craft, there we go. And it is our embroidery machine here at the space, and we have awesome software to run on it that allows you to basically take a picture and it'll convert it instantly into a multicolored fabric embroidery path. And then you just put the fabric down, get your thread, sew it up, hit go, and it's awesome, it just keeps going. And then for this can also do normal sewing, but for a majority of things, people only really need to use normal sewing machines. So we have those as well, just in case that's being taken and being used. They're really cheap to implement, so we do. Here we have our two workstations. They're outputted with natural, national instruments testing equipment, as well as everything we could possibly get as a university to get onto a computer, which is really nice. You can kind of see on the top, we've got the Adobe suite, we've got a bunch of Autodesk and SolidWorks and Simplify 3D, uh, laser cutting software, OpenSCAD, pretty much everything you can get, Mathematica, MATLAB. It's a great place for students to also come and do some homework when they don't want to download or don't have a powerful enough computer themselves. And these things are powerful. Uh, over here we have a kiln. We occasionally get people to bring in their clay work that fits in the kiln. It's basically your super easy bake oven that can go to some ridiculous temperatures to cook things really well. 
Uh, we also can do uh, closed kiln glass stuff in here. We're all about safety, so if you want to do some setups that are glass work, you can, but you have to leave the kiln closed. You can't open it up. Um, over here we are a vacuum forming machine, which is a brand new addition to the space. Essentially, you create a mold of some kind, throw it on the table here, plug in the vacuum to the back, put in some plastic, you can bring it up basically by twisting the knobs, go like this, you lock them down, turn on the switch, there's a heater in the top of this that heats up your plastic that you want to use. Then when it starts to droop to about here, and it's perfectly safe to touch that plastic, it's just warm. Uh, essentially all you have to do is flip the vacuum on, flip this down, and then drop the table down onto whatever your mold is, and it'll set the plastic down and create a perfect negative, which is really awesome for a lot of things, and it gets a lot of use around the Halloween time of year because people are always making super cool costumes. Uh, over here we have a spray painting booth which is something students almost never get access to on campuses because they're expensive to maintain and everything, but we can. Uh, right now, nothing's on, and as you can see by the paint on everything, it gets a lot of use. It's really weird because we don't actually ever see anybody, but it's got huge ventilation, everything else needed to make it safe, and a great place to come and paint your equipment as opposed to the back alley, which is a little dangerous. <laughs> and then we've got one of our biggest, baddest equipment here. It's a laser cutter. It's a Universal Laser Systems BLS 6.6. .6. This thing gets used all the time and it's super awesome. You can cut through, we restrict students here to only cutting through a quarter of an inch because it is a dorm and we do not want to be causing fires. Um, and it cuts through everything. You can engrave pictures on the wood. It's, it's an awesome tool. Um, I've seen students create everything from architectural models to just things they want to give their family it's super fun. Uh, we have another brand new addition here. This is a little miniature CNC machine known as the Other Mill. Uh, it is essentially nothing more than a CNC machine, which means you can cut anything out of any material as long as it cuts nicely. It requires a lot of experience and setup or a lot of time to basically sit there and learn. And the best part about it as a CNC machine is it's cheap and easy to fix, so we don't have to worry about an industrial machine style thing crashing itself and destroying itself because this thing doesn't have the kind of power required to destroy itself. So it's a really nice thing to have for students to learn on. And then we have over here what we like to call our ridiculous drill press. It's not a horribly powerful mill, but it is a mill drill capable of handling milling-like operations. So it's, it's your standard shop drill press slash mill. And it, it, it's pretty nice. It's got a nice DRO on it so you can accurately drill holes and things and cut things correctly. But it doesn't get a lot of use yet because we just got it and we haven't got the safety set up for it, people to use it yet. So it's locked and keyed right now. Um, and then over here we have a metal brake slash press slash roller. So if you want to make some cool things with metal, you can. And our giant toolbox full of every tool we can ever think we need from manipulators and measurometers to more power equipment down here, like heat guns and drill presses and dremels. Everything you can need, screwdrivers, hex wrenches, different grabbers, tin snips, nothing. <laughs> we have some open space in it as well because we expect to be getting more requests for more different kinds of tools. Awesome. And then finally, over here, we have a soldering station. And this is for those of us who like to, you know, create circuitry on our own or test bench stuff. Uh, we have fume hooks to suck away any nasty chemicals from the solder. We prefer non-leaded solder in the space so that it keeps us safe and nobody gets sick or anything. And we also, of course, have safety things such as ear protection for everybody in the space when they need to do something loud in here. They can without hurting their eardrums. We also have safety glasses on the way so that when we have our actual machine that can produce horrible flying stuff, people can wear safety glasses and stay safe as well. Great, and so yeah. who gets uh, to actually use this kind of space? Any student who lives on campus within HFS gets to use it for free, and any student who wants to use it can pay a fee every quarter to use it if they don't live on campus. And that has to do with the fact of whether or not they're living on campus determines whether or not they normally pay for the space. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for the tour, Jack. We appreciate it. And thanks so much for joining us, everyone, thanks. for Parent Family Weekend. Thanks.